thank you for the invitation and uh, having the opportunity to share our work in this rich environment. And I will share my screen for the presentation. Can you see them? Yes. Okay. Um, we teach at the Weissensee um, Kunsthochschule Berlin in the Department of Artistic and Design Foundations and are its department spokespersons. Yes, and also from my side, good afternoon, everyone. And the Weissensee Kunsthochschule Berlin was founded in 1946 as the art school of the North Berlin with a post Nazi and an anti fascist mission and was the only art school in East Berlin in the GDR. Uh, we, Christine and Ulf, both write and speak from a white, but not the same perspective. I, Christine Gutrieri, write as the gender non-conforming lesbian, as a trans and inter-inclusive feminist woman, as an able-bodied and cis person who grew up in East Germany and had a passport of the German Democratic Republic till the age of 22, which was then replaced by a passport of the Federal Republic of Germany. And me, we come in from a this hit of a male, goy, white perspective with a German passport, partly family Nazi background, and from an academic middle class family. In the foundation year department, we often call our the end design department together in their first year of study. Christina holds a professorship for Foundations of Digital Media since 2013 and the Professorship for Performative Spaces since 2014. We understand the space of the university as a social space that reproduces within the institution the social power-based mechanisms of inclusion and exclusion that are operative in society. We seek to negotiate power-critical knowledge and the negotiation of inclusive spaces in which intersectional experiences of discrimination are co-conceived and heard as design imminent issues in the classroom. At the level of each of our own teaching, this is secured by the autonomy of teaching and the choices we make for our teaching. Who are the scientific, art and design related actors we want to present in class if we assume that art and design history at German-speaking universities is still told as mostly male and white dominated. And which science, history, person, initiatives, work, activism do not appear here? What knowledge do students themselves bring with them and how do we create spaces in which students created Students created knowledge is understood as a necessary basis for individual art and design impulses. So instead of focusing on a dominant social perspective, we try to achieve a shift of hegemonic relations already in the design of the lesson in the examples we present in class by including students and the elaboration of power critical methodologies of teaching. The course Foundation of Digital Media is now a decidedly anti-discriminatory one because digital technological knowledge is still negotiated as knowledge of domination in the German context and is only granted to a small group of people who still have white, male and other privilege. Therefore, the course does not start with a round of who already has which experiences with digital technologies, but on the one hand, with the deconstruction of prejudice, attributions and violent exclusions, and on the other hand, with the appreciation and collection of digital and analog practices in order to activate positive previous experiences, no, ma no matter with which medium. <clears throat> I bring my own positioning into the course using the concept of factography, a method developed in the 1920s in the Soviet Union by artists, writers, photographers, and filmmakers. Pactography tries to show a, a subjective view of the world, but at the same time also the facts um, that led to the results. The active authorship, the manipulative methods of selection, the limitations, the techniques and devices, the apparatus. 
con directly related to teaching, this means for me, for example, to disclose that my research is limited by my languages, German and English, by which of my own experiences and interests it is guided, feminist, queer, anti-racist, or how my positionings limit my experiences. I try to create and hold spaces with the students where there is opportunity for all to formulate their own positionings, with bell hooks critically guiding us. I have to acknowledge that I am willing to take risk, but that my experiences influence my capacity of risk. And so there are also many gaps to fill in my teaching, critical knowledge that I have not yet discovered, have not yet re researched, for which I have lacked <coughs> attention. Students and colleagues provide important impulses so that we can go on the search together. Before I introduce design and art students to functional, later also object-oriented programming on the way to generative design, there is a critical science historical excursus on who programs or who is asked to program, who is encouraged, in which women and BPOC are centered, and which grows from year to year and becomes more differentiated and diverse. And it incorporates my own experiences as a young East German woman who began studying computer science in 1986 as one of 150 women out of 300 students. Digital literacy for all is the aspiration to make basic digital concepts accessible to everyone. In the course Performative Spaces, I present the relationship between spatial and bodily experiences as a critical emancipative potential. Who is not met and when bodies are negotiated in a German-speaking, white-dominated and non-barrier-free university? who has the privilege of being seen as normal. How can space and architecture be described as a design choreography, an arrangement of bodies and thus in social relations to each other, in which power relations are always inscribed? Who is the director of this choreography and who has been given which role? Who speaks and who listens and why? Asking with bell hooks or apply to the subject of the workshop job. Who takes the space? who gives the space and why. Thus, an introduction to a critical reading of space, spatial experiences, as well as the social representation of bodies, cannot take place in an abstract, seemingly neutral setting. The challenge for students and me as a teacher is to present these relations as changeable and to make them experienceable as potential art and design-related practices. Helpful in the sense of concrete tools are performative methodologies, the marking of one's own position and space, the negotiation of the relationship between performer and spectator, the powerful access of gaze, the handling of time as a possibility of shaping and forming, and again, the introduction of one's own body, feeling, affect, in order to generate another form of knowledge a knowledge that represents an alternative to the academic separation between mind and body. We use movement, touching, and other sensory experiences. We focus on emotions. We use walking and strolling around as a methodology for critically reading of public spaces, breathing exercises, methods of Auguste Dubois' theater of the oppressed, focusing on the feminist queer performance history art history, on the resistant perspectives of artists of color, strategies of critical spatial practices to shift the discourse of space and body towards a production of emancipated spaces and practices of resistance. Very often also in seemingly tiny gestures, displacements, interruptions, or overjoy. As a teaching person, I also try to integrate my own situatedness, but above all, the interweaving in hegemony. Having never learned nothing of this in my education, having been socialized in white spaces, I insist on the right to further training and unlearning for lecturers, while I understand my work as a critical practice research method to the question, what does it mean to teach from a white and critically male perspective on forms of discrimination that I myself am not even affected by. 
These are content foci on which we focus in our own teaching, and from them we begin to question the school as a white dominated institution. Because of our own teaching is embedded in the orders, the processes, the stories, the narratives, the politics of a university. What would it mean to change the institutional structures in which our teaching is embedded? Structures of a predominantly white art university. In other words, to open up here to demands for participation and diversity in order to make those voices heard that are not part of the institutional self-understanding due to unequal power relations, racist continuities, and associated exclusions. What does that mean for teaching faculty students? In 2022, we changed the module descriptions of the foundations accordingly, and that is a structural change. But is that sufficient? We are still operating within the curriculum up to this point and leaving the institutional structures untouched. Foundation class is an attempt to open up the school in a radical way and create access based on the assumption that art schools are powerful places of inclusion and exclusion. Foundation class was founded in 2016 at the Weizen Art School as an art education platform and resistance toolkit to facilitate access to art schools for people who have migrated to Germany and have been affected by racism. Foundation Class supports movements towards transformation and resilience by developing a milieu that calls for sustainable models of gathering and solidarity. The fundamental approach is that only lecturers who bring a similar experiential perspective to that of the students teach actually in the Foundation Class. Building on this basic approach, a kind of para-school emerges, which settles into the institution, but is not of the institution, but asserts its own politics and negotiation of space. While the participants in the one-year class are intensively preparing for the highly selective entrance examination, they are at the same time already participating in exhibitions, in cooperative working groups, thus serving the symbolic attention uh, economies of the art and design world. In 2022, the Foundation Class Collective, which emerged from Foundation Class, participated in Documenta 15 and opened up to the global art world, publicizing its methods of teaching art in several exhibition settings. Since 2016, the Foundation Class has made a decisive contribution to the formation of a transformation milieu at the university. The co-leaders Miriam Schickler, Yimisi Babatola, and Katharina Kersten, and of course also the teachers, for example, like Christian Raya Pakshi, who is talking in a minute, each with their own network, expertise, and personal commitment, have not only advanced the further development and the associated demand for the structural anchoring of the project in the university, but have also decisively contributed to a milieu of transformation at the university in cooperation with other actors and committees. We are working closely with the Foundation Class as a department of foundation, trying to keep the concerns of the project audible in the space of the school and experimenting with formats of collaborations also on the level of teaching, just as Krishan Rayapakshi's expertise has a very strong influence, especially in the department. 2020, the strategic idea emerged about the need for the school to further develop an internationalization strategy, the possibility of requesting a position that could go 50% to co-lead the foundation class, but the other 50% could go to a newly created and much needed position the position of empowerment for students of color, equal access. The project was led with much expertise by Yemisi Babatola and made an exceedingly strong impact at the institution because it responded to students' experiences of racism and created a space for them to be heard and acknowledged. Unfortunately, the institution was not able to make the position permanent at the end of the two years which is one of the main things we ask of the institution. We launched a third-party funded project on critical diversity, 
led by Dania Erni and Jiri Emini Grusen as external experts and us. The project was open to students, workshop teachers, administrators and teaching staff and was a continuing education offering on intersectional discrimination. Formats included theoretical inputs, awareness raising workshops, discussions, training also on practice research methods, etc. Knowing well that we cannot speak for all participants, the central moments within the project for us were reading together Tima Okun's text on white supremacy culture and Nana Adose Poku's um, Everyone Must Learn Everything or Emotional Labor. During the pandemic, we <clears throat> continued the project by developing an exhibition that addressed how we personally grappled with some of the issues. The team made a video of this installation in June 2021. We, ad so. <laughs> we additionally act out of our positioning and anti-discriminatory positions in many committees of the university, in selection and appointment committees, in the Academic Senate, in the Equal Opportunity Commission, which organizes the annual University Day as continuing education for the whole institution. Um, in 2018, for example, the topic was strategies for dealing with racism and right-wing extremism at Weissensee, or 2020, Beyond Wishful Thinking, Anti-Discrimination and Diversity at Weissensee Academy Now. We are also part of the EU-funded EU artist project together with Anisha Gupta Müller cooperating with 10 other European partner universities and the Weissensee contribution will be reshaping its curriculum around the discussion of art efficiency, transformative potential and providing access to marginalized groups as well as to create an online toolbox to provide tools to institutions interested in shaping curricula around transformation. Our approach is to negotiate perspectives of critical whiteness as a crucial basis for using neuroscientific psychological methodologies to describe the efficiency of artistic production and art experience, especially in the interaction between art, design and viewers, but also the gazes from the science and from outside which try to intervene here in a measuring and descriptive way, we see it as a necessity to negotiate experiences of discrimination and positioning in ways that challenge power structures. So where do we stand now? We have to realize that many activities and projects that we have described are still extracurricular projects there are still additions to the guaranteed curriculum, but we are working on them. For all the opposition we face from what we call our institutional activism, we are left with one clear lesson learned from our position collaboration with BIPOC person that we would like to share here. The basis of our attempt at collaboration, cooperation, engagement is the foundation of mutual trust that must be established again and again and again, move at the speed of trust. Likewise, we always try to remain open for initiatives, projects, concerns of the students to hold the space in which their perspectives are formulated and to strengthen them through the institutional functions that we as teachers bring with us. So the overall goal is to create a milieu of transformation in the institution from different actors. What we are realizing is not only how much work is still ahead of us, but that actors of color are reflecting back that the equivalent to the degree of which institutions are actually micro slowly beginning to change, there is an increasing backlash that emancipatory initiatives in majority white institutions are then experiencing all the more because they are mostly only set up on a project basis, temporary, externally funded, precariously funded, and not geared towards sustainable change. A backlash parallel to change. What does this mean for us who work in the institution 
what does it mean for the institution? Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. And now we are happy to hand over to our dear colleague, Krishan Rayapakshi. Krishan, the stage is yours. Uh, thank you, Ulf, and thank you, Christina.